Hey guys, today is my birthday. If you're watching this on the date of publication, it's, well, it's not my birthday yet today, but when you see this, it, it will be. And for my birthday, I'm gonna give you a little gift that I think is pretty cool. I'm gonna be teaching you how to make your own picture profiles on your camera. Not in the way that you do it in your camera menus where you're able to adjust the, uh, the white balance and things like that, the tints. That is basic stuff, right? So in this video, I'm gonna be giving you a tool that is able to create essentially your own log profile in any camera. So if you're ready to learn how to do that, you're ready to learn, you're ready to start getting your own look out of things, even past just color grading, you're ready to shoot your own look out of camera, you're ready to make your own log profile, let's get into it right now. All right, so here we are on my desktop, and as you can see right here, we've got our picture style editor. There's a link in the description down below where you can download this. This is pretty much the only tool you're gonna need for this entire thing other than the cables that came with your camera and your camera. So we're gonna go ahead and open that. But once it pops open, this is what you're gonna see. It looks a little bit dated, but it still works fine. So we're gonna go to File, Open Image, and then I'm gonna find an image. Generally, you're gonna to wanna to use a CR2 image or some other kind of raw file. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with this image right here. And as you can see, this image is already reasonably flat. There's not a ton going on contrast-wise, things like that, and it's a little bit out of focus around here. But we're gonna go ahead and get started on it anyway. When you bring your image in, what pops up is this tool palette. And this tool palette is going to be very useful. This is what separates this program from being able to design these on your camera. Because here you get a tone curve and you get all of these controls as well as these controls here and these controls here. We're gonna get started in our tone curve down here and we're gonna do that standard S curve. We're gonna bring up our highlights, we're gonna bring down our shadows. It's gonna introduce a little bit of contrast there. I think we did too much in the highlights. So you're gonna want this to look reasonably flat. So I'm gonna leave my color tone alone, but if you want to change yours, that's totally up to you. You move that way for reddish and you move this way for greenish, otherwise magenta and green. Saturation we're gonna bring down to negative two just to get that more flat look because you can bring that back in post after you've been shooting. I'm gonna bring our contrast down a little bit as well for that same reason because we can bring that back in post and this will help your camera to see more in its actual image. We're gonna take our sharpness down, again, same reason, but we're gonna bring that one down all the way to zero. And we're gonna make this the uh, neutral base, just so that it's a little bit flatter. And now that we've got all that going on, we're gonna bring our shadows down just a touch more. Now that we've got our image a little bit flatter, a little bit more monotone, we're gonna go into our six color axes here. And what this does is allows you to take all six of these big color groups and change them individually with these hue, saturation, and luminance sliders. If you're familiar at all with Lightroom, you probably know how HSL sliders work, but I'm gonna go through them anyway just so you can see them. So as you can see, the reds here in the image are very pinkish now in my hand and in this board. And if we slide it back the other way, it's gonna turn everything a bit more yellow or green. So we are gonna drag that back down to zero because I like where it's sitting when it's just there. And we're gonna bring that saturation of the reds down just a touch so that we're able to pull more out of it in post. Luminance we're gonna leave alone and you just do the same thing for all of your individual colors here as you see fit. So this is kind of where you can design your own out of camera look. So if you have a LUT that you like to use or if you wanna make a LUT, but you want it to be designed around something proprietary that you've made for you. This is where you do that. You change your colors around, and you change your curves around, you can change your sharpness and all this, you can change your base picture style, and all these things will help you. So here, this is where you're gonna mess with finding your log curve. You want something that makes your image look reasonably flat without like destroying it. And this is looking good for me. So I'm gonna leave it right there. We're gonna leave our six colors the way they are because I want those to be pretty neutral. And we're gonna go into specific colors. And what you can do here is use this color picker 
And then if you say you don't want any blues in your image, you can take this and then you'll be able to select any of the colors in your image that you want to see. It'll show you exactly where those are as you click on them in this color wheel and then you can change them individually. So if I change that, it's only going to change the things that are very related to the color that I've chosen. You can bring up your lightness, you can bring it down, and you have individual tone curves for each of these colors that you've selected. So that's pretty awesome. Once you've got everything looking how you want it to look, once you've decided, okay, this looks pretty good, so actually we're going to bring that cyan down here down a little bit. We're going to bring that saturation out just a touch. That's looking really flat, looking ready to go, because our camera is still going to capture that there is data there that is blue, but when it shoots the photo, it's going to look more flat, which is going to allow it to uh, pick up more of the detail in there versus everywhere else. So we've got good detail throughout the image. I mean, this one, we're out of focus, but that's intentional. So once we've got everything how we want it, once we've got our camera getting the maximum amount of information out of the highlights where nothing's blown out, nothing is completely black except in there, but that's fine because we don't need any detail in there anyway, we're going to use this little floppy disk picture to save it. Before you do this, though, I would highly recommend that you pop a few different pictures in here just to make sure that things look good across the board and you're not just adjusting for one image. I'm not going to do that just to save time, but I would highly recommend that you put a few different images in here just to make sure that nothing looks ridiculous and that you have a very similar look throughout all of those images. So we're going to go ahead and hit save, and it's going to save it as a PF3 file. That's exactly what you want. You're going to want to name it. We're going to call this one tutorial, and then you're going to have to caption it something between 1 and 30 characters. So we're just going to tutorial again. You can call it whatever you want. It's going to help you to be able to find this later, and you can kind of give yourself notes about what it is that you'll be able to see in your camera. So we're going to go ahead and save this to our desktop, and then right there, boom, tutorial PF3. So now is the part where you need to have your camera plugged into your computer. And you're going to want to make sure that if you have a photo mode and a video mode that you're in photo mode, otherwise this may not work properly. So we're going to go ahead and open up our EOS utility. This is also going to be linked in the description down below so that you're able to find that as well. So I've plugged my camera in, I turned it on, it's on the photo mode. What we're going to do is click on camera settings here. We're going to go to register picture style file and then we're going to find one that we don't care so much if it gets changed and then we're going to click on this open right here and then we're going to find our profile that we made before which for me is just right here you hit open and then you hit ok it's going to take a second it's going to save it onto your camera and then you can go ahead and just hit quit and boom that's it. Now when you select your picture profile on your camera, you're going to be able to see that one right in there, and you're going to be able to use it for videos, for photos, for anything you want on your camera. I hope that it helps you kind of carve out your individuality with your images, where people are like, whoa, how they do that, and you're the only one with that information because you're the only one with that specific picture profile, because it's not built in. You took the time and you built it yourself. So like the video, subscribe to the channel, Leave a comment down below, let me know if this was helpful to you or what you're going to use this for, or if you just have any questions about anything else, hit me up in those comments down below. If you want to watch another camera tutorial, check out this one right here. If you want to watch a DaVinci Resolve tutorial, check out this one. And if you want to see the video that YouTube thinks that you should watch, check out this one right here. Again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.